Hello, this is your instructor, Mr. Aguilar, showing you a quick video of how to correctly draw fillets on an isometric drawing. First, you'll see an image provided that says on the top, do not use the fillet command while creating isometric drawings. After you watch the video tutorial about using the correct technique for drawing fillets and rounds in an isometric drawing, I want you to compare your completed isometric drawing with this image to see the differences. But first, take a look at the image. Study the bended corners along the door handle at all locations. Notice how they do not have the same physical appearance. These two look larger than these. The height of both handles look different too. One size appears longer than the other. This one's longer than the shorter one. So let's begin the process. After you draw your orthographic projection, you'll have information about your the bends of your door handle. The larger ones have a radius of 0.438, the smaller have a radius of 0.25. As you start drawing your isometric drawing, you already know that you have to draw lines that are orthographic to the three projection directions of a isometric drawing, which you use with the F5 key, and ortho should be on. So you draw the outline of everything as if there were no rounded corners, no fillets, no rounds, as you see here. And then you'll use this technique to draw the corners rounded or filleted as you see here in the orthographic. I will demonstrate first with the smaller radius 0.25, so that will be the number I'll be using. The command you'll be using is ellipse, but it will not be this ellipse command here. The one you need is not listed up above. So just type in the command ellipse, pick ellipse, then with the down arrow on the keyboard, look for the word isocircle. We need to locate the center of the radius for 0.25 on our isometric drawing before we can use the ellipse command with the isocircle method. So let me change colors to help you see this better. Temporarily. I'll pick the line command. Starting at the corner, I will project backwards 0.25 and up 0.25 to locate the center of my ISO circle. I will type an ellipse, hit the down arrow, look for the word ISO circle, select it, it's going to ask me for my center point of my ISO circle. I'll pick the point I was looking for, which is 0.25 away from this corner over and up. And then I'll type in the radius, so in this case, just pick the opposite corner of the ISO circle, which is the radius of that ellipse. And now I have my proper curve. I'll repeat that for the other interior round here. Excuse me, uh, interior fillet. So line start here, draw a temporary line 0.25 over, and in this case down, there's my center point, type an ellipse, down arrow, isocircle, center point, radius, and let me trim it so you can see what has been created. Then erase the original radius lines you have to draw to locate the center of your isocircle. Continue trimming. And you can see the curves forming. And we're going to do the same for the outside rounds of the part, but at a different radius. It's going to be 4, 0.438, or whichever radius you're required to do for your drawing. So in this case, it's 0.438. So line, go backwards, 0.438 and up 0.438. I'll do the same over here. The ellipse command, down arrow, isocircle, center, radius. I could just copy it over since I don't want to have to repeat myself. 
and I'll need to do the same over here and here. Point four three eight. Point four three eight. Copy these over using the center as my base point. Trim. At this point, I'm sure you get the idea of how this works. Although it may appear to be time consuming, it is the professional way to do things and the right way to do it for drawing isometric drawings with parts that are rounded. I'll continue with these over here. These were 0.25. Now as for lines like this, this is the old incorrect one. Needs to be trimmed still. All right, so ellipses have ellipse isocircles do have quadrants or and midpoints. You see that diamond there, which happens to be where the uh, midpoint happens to be. It happens to be the same place in this case. I'll hit the F5 key, go in the correct direction, trim it off, and that's the correct location for that part. Let me get everything the correct color now. I can see when ellipses are used when they're trimmed because the shape of the isocircle will always appear as a ghost image on a drawing. This is how I check your work, by the way. And as for the back side, all you need to do is just copy it backwards. So copy, pick everything that you've created so far. You won't need all of it, of course, but just copy what you appear might be there. We'll copy from this side to this side. And of course, start trimming everything that's not needed anymore. Or we'll remove what is behind the object that you cannot see draw lines to close off the shapes. Oh, I forgot I have that overridden by magenta. There you go. So I did put that back to by layer. This is not needed. This can be trimmed. And there's our completed door handle with now the proper curves for all fillets and the height of the handles look the same which are in, a, in height. They look the same in height. Lines that are not needed, this is not necessary. This is not necessary. These are only required if these fillets are very small. For example, let's say the rounds and fillets are less than one eighth of an inch, so it looks more like a sharp corner, then you would have these two lines. But in our case, they're so large, it's not necessary to show anything here. So let's compare that to this. See the difference? All right, that's the end of this video.